Welcome to Barzell's main railway station. We've been here before. We came here recently to go to Lauterbrunnen um, and we've just actually returned. So uh, we're now going to go and check out the Weihnachtsmarkt, which is, uh, I believe, the Christmas market. Oh, hello. Got to pay. You got to pay. Got to pay to go to toilets in Switzerland. Got to pay. Got to pay. Spend a penny to go for. I spent a penny to go to the toilet. It's, a, it's an outrage. So, uh, oh, I'm very nice. So the plan for the day is, is that we're going to go to, is it the Marktplatz? Yes. We're going to go to the Marktplatz, uh, take the tram there, and then go and check out the uh, the Christmas markets. Uh, one thing I've found really interesting about Basel Station is just how many like homeless people and stuff are outside of it. Like, I was reading the reviews earlier. That's literally what everyone was saying. Only homeless people are on stuff. It's quite sad, really. So yeah, there's Barzell Station. And uh, it's got a bit of a reputation, a negative reputation, from the reviews I've read at least, where uh, people feel it's uh, quite a dangerous place. I've not got that vibe, but then, to be honest, you know, I wouldn't even class that as being close to dangerous compared to places that I've been in say like London and uh, that's about it really, London. <laughs> I wouldn't even say London's that dangerous really, well it depends where you go I guess but you stay out the, uh, the obviously dangerous areas you're good. We've just realised actually before we go to the uh, the markets that we need to go to a place called Migros, I think that's how you say it and uh, it's basically like a, uh, like a supermarket I guess yeah it's the best way to describe it. And it's a little bit cheaper, it's a cheaper option. And obviously uh, we're trying to save the pennies. Uh, so we're gonna go and check that out. But apparently you've got like uh, fresh food, you've got bakery products and stuff like that. So we're gonna give that a check, see what it's like. And if it's a good price, then we'll perhaps be able to recommend it to you all as a cost, cost saving measure when you come and visit Switzerland yourselves, if you plan to. Right, so we're heading towards the uh, the old Christmas markets now. <laughs> we actually noticed it on the way, it was on the bus and we noticed it. And we were like, hang on, aren't they the Christmas markets? But <laughs> Google Maps were telling us something completely different. So then we got off the stop that Google Maps told us to get off. And then Google Maps decided to tell us to go back on ourselves, to go back to the very place where we saw the Christmas markets. Go figure. It's only a short walk. It's only a short walk, exactly. <laughs> Right, we made it. We're gonna see how much things cost and then make an informed decision as to whether or not we can afford to do this. But for the very least, we'll show you what you can expect to find in a, uh, in a Christmas market and what the vibe is. It's not a good start when a, a spread is 22 quid, a knife is 23. Yeah, I do like these kind of Christmas markets. I went to one in Edinburgh recently, actually. It was very nice. Equally as expensive as well. <laughs> All right. We've got some meat here. Okay, that seems relatively fair. About what we paid in Edinburgh, yeah, about the same. I wonder if they accept card though, that's the question. But we'll keep looking around, come back to this. Oh look, they sell pastel di nata. Portuguese uh, egg custard tarts. Very nice. They should have been. Yeah, so these are the sort of prices you're looking at. Look. So really, the easiest way to go about it is just to kind of knock up, if you're like doing it by like Great British Pounds, it's to just knock off a pound. <laughs> and that's more or less how much things cost here. It's pretty close. I think um, the Swiss franc is worth 90p in terms of a pound. So a pound is uh, 90, Swiss, Swiss, 90 Swiss cents. Cents, I guess it is. I'm assuming that's what that is. Now they do glühwein. 
which is like a mulled wine. They certainly take Christmas seriously here, man. I like it. <laughs> Blue vine is five, so about four pound, roughly. That's pretty good. It's actually a little bit cheaper here than I was expecting. I think there's several markets as well from what I've heard. There's more than one. This is like the main one from what I've heard. Right, so let's keep moving on. Now they've got wrestlet, racket, wrestlet. It's like cheese, basically. More glue vine. Let's have a look in here. There you go. That's what I was talking about. Ten francs, about nine pound. Smells very cheesy. Guten Abend, kann ich mich Karte bezahlen? Super, super. Uh, ich möchte eine, um, eins, sorry, um, Rasslet? Rasslet? Rasslet. <laughs> Danke. I'm going to people, so this is a, I can't, hopefully you guys can't hear the music, but uh, this is a Rasslet. It's a small one, so this is what you get for 10, 10 50. So you get two potatoes, kartoffel, some onions, zwiebel, zwiebel, and gherkins. I think that's gher gherka? Gherkin? Can't remember what it is. I think it's just gherkin. So let's have a try. I'll try this first. I'm not sure what kind of cheese it is, but yeah. it's good. Certainly a fan of cheese, so can't go wrong with some onions as well. I'm making a meal out of this, aren't I? Here, help me out, Sam. Got some cheese. There you go. <laughs> a nice big bite. Mm. That's very good. We'll finish that off and give you our thoughts. Alright, so you want the verdict. So, to be honest, um, yeah, I don't. I don't think it was worth 10.50, <laughs> personally. My, my judgment's out on that, but then again, Swiss prices. That's probably really good for all we know. But you've got two bits of potato, a couple of gherkins, a couple of pickles, and some melted cheese. So I, you just saw in the little clip there that the bloke, what he does is he puts some on this kind of, the cheese on this tray, and then puts it under a grill, melts it, and then he kind of gets a spatula, and then kind of takes the cheese and just bangs it over the potatoes. I think the crispy cheese was the crispy part of the cheese was nice, but yeah, I wasn't blown away. <laughs> That's the first ever time trying that, and I've seen it in uh, YouTube videos. And in YouTube videos, it always looks really, uh, like really, really lush. Maybe it is in Germany, for instance, but uh, yeah. I know I was having some language barrier problems there because uh, <laughs> my German isn't that good, so I was failing to communicate. Frankly, the lady next to me knew what I was trying to do, so she helped me out. So, uh, yeah, kind citizen helped me out. I think he probably knew English, but he was just trying to test me just to make sure I did to try and uh, help me out. Some people, one thing I find, for instance, like if you're trying to learn a different language and you're speaking that language in a different country and they know your native tongue, they'll probably just start speaking it. English is a great example of that. Like if you speak English and German and someone realizes that you're English, they will uh, just start speaking English to you. And some people don't like that. Sometimes it's helpful, depends. But, uh, yeah. This should have been. That means, excuse me, by the way, if you're curious. So, we've got some of this kind of stuff here. Got 
some of this kind of stuff. You've got glue vine, which is like a spiced hot wine. Never tried it actually. That doesn't sound very appealing to me to be honest. It might be lovely, but I think you've tried it any time. Mulled wine, glue vine. Mulled wine. I, I don't think it's the same thing. I think we just called it mulled, mulled wine. But it's called glue vine. What, what do you think of it? It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I might have to try it one day, I think, but not here. Maybe if we go to Germany. We're planning to go to Germany at some point, actually. So we're both practicing German. Uh, Sammy's going to stop practicing now. She's done all that she needs to do, but I'm going to continue practicing to in attempt to become semi fluent. Or at least conversational, so I can understand what people are saying. Because uh, I'll talk and then I get to a situation where people ask me a question or something or respond, and I'll be like, oh, don't understand. Sorry. <laughs> and then we have to, have to come and save me with their English knowledge, which is always quite amusing, actually. But yeah, the level of English here is. Well, like most places I've been actually, incredible. Um, but then I was speaking to a guy earlier and he was saying it was, it was taught from uh, early from from early years in school, along with French as well. And then he was saying to me that um, Italian and Spanish is uh, optional. But a lot of people choose Italian because in the southern part of um, Switzerland, um, they speak Italian. So obviously that probably helps if you want to go on holiday over there. So it makes sense really. That'd be weird, wouldn't it, if uh, in England we had like multiple languages and different regions had different languages. So if you're like, oh, I want to go to Yorkshire, but I've got to go and learn, I don't know, Swedish, for instance. That'd be quite jarring, wouldn't it? But yeah, there you go. So the Barzell Christmas Market, that's what you can expect. See if there's anything else worth trying before we go. You got bratwurst, sorry, roast sausage, klopfer, not familiar with that, pinu, rackwurst, mekeres, hot dog, I know that, hule, that's uh, chicken, schnitzel, schnitzel brot, schnitzel in bread, quiche, can't go wrong with a bit of quiche, kaiser is cheese, zwiebel is onion, and speck is, actually don't know what speck is, but we're probably just going to go over here to that co-op that you see over there. Go and get a few bits, take them back to our hotel room and then probably call it a night, to be honest, because uh, we've not long been hiking in the Swiss Alps. And uh, let me tell you, that's uh, quite quite a workout, <laughs> especially when it's snowing. OK, we'll, uh, we'll walk carefully. We'll do our sidestep walk. More, more me than anything. I actually managed to survive the Swiss Alps without falling over. I was actually quite impressed by that. I genuinely thought I'd go uh, go and hit the deck, but I didn't. So uh, yeah, that is the Christmas markets here. So if you ever you're curious about the cost of things, or you know what you can buy from there, or we weren't planning to spend a huge deal, but it gives you an idea of what there is. We weren't going to give you one of them typical YouTube channel things where we put the fancy music and the over complimentary things. We'll just tell you the truth, and it's expensive and it's crowded and there's not that much food that is interesting to buy and it's just like 15 different varieties of blue vine from different stalls so sorry to break it to you it is a very very beautiful place good for christmas magic if you're looking for that but that really is probably about it <laughs> i don't mean to be rude either it's obviously you know it's my opinion probably not shared by others but that's my thoughts Yeah, this is the hotel we're staying. It's a self-service hotel, which is quite interesting. There you go, look, self-check-in hotel. We're on floor five. So we've got a few steps to tackle first. Hey people, back at the hotel. And uh, yeah, it's been quite a, uh, quite a day. Um, we've obviously done the old uh, hike around the Alps. If you haven't seen that video yet, do give it a watch. It's very interesting. Very, very beautiful as well. Um, we've also today done the market hunt. That, this was on the same day as well, believe it or not. So this, you're, even, you're, even though you're seeing it in two videos, this was all in one day. Um, and obviously traveling a total of five hours to uh, two set of destinations. So uh, 
we're rather fatigued, a little hungry, and uh, ready to kind of settle down in a hotel. But usually at this point, we'd probably be going out for a restaurant, buy a tweet somewhere like that, maybe do a little food review, or even tell you about what it was like. But we're not doing that today, because in Switzerland, eating out is very much a luxury um, for even the locals. So um, instead we decided to get a few things from the co-op, as you've seen. And uh, let's have a look and see what we managed to get. So we got an apricot slice tart kind of thing. We got a sandwich, decent sized bag of paprika crisps. They will do us for the journey home tomorrow. Same thing with these chocolate biscuits. Not the healthiest choices we appreciate, but to be honest, we just needed some uh, fat and sugar in us <laughs> after today's hike. And uh, we didn't really eat much today. I think, what did we have? Half We had half a sandwich. Uh, we had a sandwich. Um, we had one of them, half of one of them for breakfast and lunch. So <laughs> yeah, we need a bit more energy. So the question is, how much did this all come up to? Well, this came up to, oh, I actually have the receipt here. How, how handy is that? This came up to 2140 Swiss francs, if you're curious. So I'll put the uh, conversions for them on the screen now, if you're curious. So let's see what's what. So the uh, uh, baguette was 620. So if you're English, uh, just basically knock off roughly 90p. And that's what you're, well knock off 10p, sorry. And that's roughly how much it'll be. Or it'll be about six quid for that baguette, roughly. I'll put the actual conversion for that up if you're curious. Um, 685 for the crisps, the apricot slice or the apricot tart, 350. Uh, the chocolate biscuits, 295 and the iced tea, 190. Yeah, it was, that was quite standard actually, that's what you'd pay in England. But 21.40 for five items, so that's what you're in for if you're coming to Switzerland. Uh, not hating on Swiss or the Swiss or the Switzerland or anything like that, it's just I'm just pointing out facts, that's what it is. So if you're coming from a country with a lower uh, value currency, please do be aware of this. Uh, even in the UK, this would be considered pretty pretty crazy to pay, uh, especially bag of crisps. I mean, 685, them, them crisps in the UK, probably pick them up for about maybe four, four quid, 450-ish. And that's, that's in one of the more expensive shops. In Sainsbury's, you probably grab a similar bag of crisps for three quid. So yeah, for context. Again, I'm not hating on you, Switzerland. Um, it's just just spitting facts. Uh, obviously, the situation is different here because of uh, you know how tax works and whatnot. But um, yeah, these is the facts and all that. But uh, yeah, that's how much it all cost. So, what's the plans? So we are probably gonna eat a little bit of this. We've got to save some for tomorrow because it's got to cover some of our lunch as well, or at least some of our breakfast. And then we are going to get a good night's sleep, get up early, and we're going to go and look around Basel in the morning. Because each time we've been here in the city, it's been dark. So when we arrived, it was dark, and then we woke up early in the morning and it was dark. We went off to Lauterbrunnen, Brunnen, Lauterbrunnen, sorry, and it was light in Lauterbrunnen. Came back. Came, came back, out. and it was dark in Basel. So we've never seen it in the light. So. We're hope to, hoping to see it in the day, see what the vibe is. We've been to a Christmas market now, so we don't need to do that. So we're just going to explore the city. We've heard of Munsterplatz and Munster... There's a cathedral as well, I believe, that's, that's been recommended. So we're going to check them out and just go and see some of the historical sites and just try not to spend any money, basically, because we, you know, we've got to, got to save the pennies for the rest of the uh, food for the rest of the day. So, um, yeah. One thing we will say though is uh, we're very, very grateful to Switzerland for doing the old uh, Basel travel card. They probably do realise that people from certain countries, I mean England not so much, but certainly you know countries with a, a smaller currency value would really struggle with these prices. So to make your transport free for people is a very, very, very good move. Actually, I do respect that. <coughs> that we'd ever do anything like that in the UK for our uh, for our visitors. So uh, yeah, kudos to you, Switzerland, for doing that one at least. Um, in terms of Switzerland, what are our thoughts? Well, it's a tough one. We absolutely loved Lauterbrunnen, the Alps and stuff like that, the beauty. 
um, the prices do leave a lot to be desired but I guess if you grow up and you're used to those prices then it's not that big a deal we were speaking to somebody in Lausbrunnen and um, she was like meh yeah, well you know I don't think it's expensive and we were like okay fair enough <laughs> yeah but I think that's because she's lived here all her life exactly yeah yeah she's lived so here all her life used to it. so she's used to them prices but she said that when she went to London she found that she found London to be expensive very which I found very strange because these the average price in Switzerland for me is just what the London prices are yeah. really that's how I describe it Switzerland is London prices everywhere so I found that a bit strange but maybe people can, can concur and obviously disagree obviously you're welcome to that's just my fault um, but uh, yeah so the beauty of Switzerland is is astonishing um, I've noticed I think I've mentioned this already but I've noticed a lot of um, poverty and uh, a lot of in, dare I say destitution in certain areas of Basel um, lots of graffiti lots of gangs mm. some sketchy areas and people just roaming about no one's giving us any harm and stuff but it's just some people feel a little bit uncomfortable you know it's the only way to put it but so it's it's a completely different view of Switzerland I mean obviously we grew up seeing the hills are alive with the sound of music and all that we kind of did technically see that side of things and we also grew up thinking that the chocolate was the best thing in the world which it is we yeah, did have some of the chocolates is. very 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 good uh but yeah we there are sides of it we you know we didn't realize how much of a ghetto certain places can be so it was a bit of a surprise to us but um but it's what it is you know what i mean I, I still think this is an awesome country would i come back honestly no i no. wouldn't um i know you're probably going to be sitting there like well, we don't want you back it's not that I don't want to come back because I don't like it. I really do. But there's two reasons for that. The first reason is, to be honest, is because we don't tend to return back to the same country more than once. Unless it's a very, very good reason. Um, second reason is because, to be honest, we're probably what you'd call cheapskates. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, we like to save money. We're, um, frugal. We're, like, we're frugal. Frugal. Frugal is a better word. We're frugal. We like to save money. Frugal. Um, we don't like to spend too much money on stuff and uh, you obviously don't really have the option here. Um, mm. I, I dread to think what it's like for people that stay longer than a few days. Um, but am I glad I came? 100%. It is one of the most beautiful countries I've ever seen in my life. It is stunning. Okay. The people have been incredible. So friendly, so caring, so welcoming and so so intelligent and smart. Everyone can speak so many languages. I mean, that probably just seems very normal to you guys and girls in Switzerland. but. To us in the UK, that's, that's, that's a very big thing. That's very impressive. So we do uh, doff our caps to you for that. And uh, don't for a second think that I'm uh, disrespecting Switzerland, because I'm not, I really do like this country. Uh, one of my friends actually uh, grew up in Switzerland, Colin his name is. Um, I remember I spoke to him and I was like, oh, uh, there's a, I know Switzerland, there's a place called Schaffhausen. He was like, that's a tiny little village, how do you know that? I was like, I'm just interested in Swiss villages. So uh, yeah. Obviously got to see some Swiss villages, which was nice. But uh, anyway, I'll rub it on enough. If you got to this point of the video, I'm rather impressed. You've heard my rumblings about I'm Switzerland. Enjoying. But it's, it's pouring it down, so that's nice. We'll enjoy that. We'll enjoy listening to that. But uh, we're going to go get some rest, ready for our excursion of Basel in the daytime. So hopefully you'll join us for that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. hope you have a wonderful day. And we will catch you very soon on the next video. Take care, people. See you later.